So, just thought I'd give you a little tour before the video. This is my cat who workstation here. As you can see, it's uh, got all the covers on the uh, the wallpaper. If you want that wallpaper, just get a hold of me. And probably one of my favorite pictures of uh, Coco, I think Coco the first and Lillian Jackson Braun. Bit of a retro nerd. Huh? As you can see in the corner here, I've got some Commodore computers, some arcade things, and you can see my editing bay here for the Cat Who channel. And over here, some Amiga and some Commodore 128 computer. Kind of cool, huh? All right. Uh, today's video is going to be a cool one. It's going to be a top 10 video. And uh, I'm going to do a series of these. And uh, some might be 10, maybe 8, maybe 5. But anyway, these are a great way to learn about the Cat Who series. Uh, this first one is going to be learn about the author and why she chose what she did in the way of writing. Is she going to write any other books? You know, was, had she, did she have any plans during her life to do that? So I'm not going to do any spoilers right now. But watch the video. You're going to love that. And then also, a lot of the information here, much of it, most of it, came from the original Lillian Jackson Braun newsletter written by Helen McCarthy. Uh, she was a phenomenal lady who had a special relationship with Lillian Jackson Braun and the newsletter won for seven years. Now, with some help with some folks here in the channel, uh, and the uh, the uh, Cat Who fan club on the Facebook, we are actually trying to see what happened with her, uh, whether she's still around. Uh, I think we actually have a contact and a phone number. I'm going to try it, hopefully later here in a week or so. And I'd like to be able to give a proper uh, call out and shout out to Helen. She did such a good job. So, all right, on to the video. Today we reveal the top 10 questions asked of Lillian Jackson Braun about her writing and her stories. She did lots of questions and answers in the official Lillian Jackson Braun newsletter compiled by Helen McCarthy over the years, and this top 10 list is gleaned from those. We start with number 10. Where do you get your ideas? From the teapot. At least, that's what I used to believe. A nice cup of tea always started the ideas flowing. Then I discovered it was not necessary to drink the tea, simply prepare it. Next, it worked if I simply boiled the water, a great saving on tea bags. Now, I have only to leave my desk and walking into the kitchen, and, presto. Number 9. Your novels have wonderful details in them. Do you have to do extensive research? I admit to spending a day at the public library, reading motorcycle magazines, while riding the cat who played post office. So that birch tree could talk the lingo. Books on turkey farming, ghosts, milking a cow, etc. have supplied background information for certain characters or incidents. And before riding the cat who went underground, I took my plumber to lunch and made a lot of notes. Generally, though, the details in the Cat Who books are retrieved from my personal computer, aka brain, which has been programmed during a lifetime of experiences, observations, and day-to-day -day reading. Question number eight. Which scenes do you most enjoy writing, and least? Least. Episodes of violence and threatened violence, I'm a pussycat by nature. Most. Humorous interludes, especially when those smart cats are outwitting poor Quill, usually autobiographical. Also, dialogue always wanted to write plays. Also, descriptions of Quill's living quarters, being a would-be designer. Coming in at number seven, in writing the Cat Who books, why did you choose your particular settings and characters? I'm most comfortable when writing about something I know, and when I started the series, I was a journalist covering interior design, art, antiques, crafts, etc. Hence the newspaper setting. I made the protagonist a male with a bushy mustache to avoid the suggestion that the stories were autobiographical. Eventually, I retired and moved to the country, so Quillerin had to move to the country, whether he liked it or not. 
Supporting characters also are the kind of people I know. Since I am not acquainted with gangsters, spies, call girls or football players, you won't find any such persons rubbing elbows with Coco and Yum Yum. Number six is a fan favorite to ask, why don't you write longer books? One of the few personal faults I will admit to is impatience. I am always impatient to finish this so I can do that. It's difficult to write long books when one's instincts lean toward the short story. My early career in advertising, which requires a lot of punch in a few words, only encouraged my tendency to think short and write short. So please, dear reader, have a heart. Don't ask for longer books, read more slowly. We are halfway through with question five. How did you learn to write? By writing. Reading the right authors helped too, but mostly it was the early practice of writing letters to everyone, always trying to make them interesting to read. Later, as an advertising copywriter, I learned to be concise, convincing, attention-grabbing and reader-friendly. Next, a journalism career added other disciplines. I still like to write letters, but the cat who consumes so much time, thought and energy that it's impossible to correspond with all my new book pals. Thanks to Helen McCarthy's bright idea of a newsletter, I can now keep in touch with all of you on a regular basis. Number 4. You always write about antiques in your novels. Do you enjoy living with them? Like Quillerin, I used to dislike antiques, preferring contemporary design. But like Quillerin, I learned to appreciate them when I wrote for a newspaper. My beat covered museums, antique forums, private collections, and antique shops. I still furnish with contemporary plus a few antiques for accent, such as an English tavern table, a twistle twig rocker, and a wooden pitchfork. One of my favorites is an iron-strapped oak dower chest with painted decorations that looks Austrian, inscribed with the bride's name, Maria Klingenschon von Goldheim. Does that ring a bell? Question 3. WFAD, a radio station in Millbury, Vermont, had an interview with Lillian Jackson Braun back in 1990. Its host, John Fredrickson, Ask her about her story's characters. And in the development of those characters, is that where her ideas for new stories come? This is how she answered. To tell you the truth, the titles occur to me first and I jot those down and then when I'm ready to start another book, I pick out one of those titles and see how it would fit into the progression of Quillerin's life. The next consideration is, what can a cat do to solve a mystery? The question is not who committed the crime, but how is a normal cat going to turn up the clue that solves the mystery? That is the hardest part and that is what people should be looking for. Coming in at number two. Do you write with a certain kind of reader in mind? Yes. Myself. I like a little suspense, a little humor, much dialogue, a lot of visual details, and information about a variety of subjects. As a newspaper columnist, Quillerin can interview subjects about bookbinding, goat farming, barn construction, antique printing presses, etc. As a writer for the Detroit Free Press for so many years, I found it stimulating to interview experts on a variety of topics, learning something new every day. And the top, number one question that many of us have in our minds, mm -hmm. John Fredrickson from WFAD Radio asked the question. He said, on the aspect of branching out in any other areas, do you have any desire in that regard as far as subject matter or other books that are waiting to be written? No, I'm quite happy with Quillerin, Coco, and Yum Yum. No, no, a thousand times no. Or as Coco would say, a kick kick. 
thanks for watching the top 10 uh, question and answer list on Lillian Jackson Braun. Before you go, please don't forget to click on the like button. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe and smash down on that bell to get notified of all the new videos. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.